At the Monastery of the Blessed Sacrament in Cleveland, Ohio, the cloistered Poor Clare nuns are processing with prayer and song. This little ceremony takes place within their beautiful enclosure garden and is secluded from the world around it. In just such seclusion do these Franciscan religious live their entire lives, just as their holy mother, St. Clare, lived nearly eight centuries ago. The noble Lady Clare of Assisi was inspired by the preaching of St. Francis, known as the Poverello, or Little Poor One. She earnestly sought him out, eager to absorb his spiritual teaching. Francis awakened within her young soul the desire to leave everything behind and give herself entirely to our Lord Jesus Christ. This seraphic father called her his little plant. Together, in the year 1212, they founded the Second Franciscan Order, known today as Poor Clares. From San Damiano in Assisi, the first dwelling of these contemplative nuns, have come all other monasteries within the order. This house of prayer in Cleveland owes its origin to two monasteries, San Lorenzo in Rome and the community in Dusseldorf, Germany. graph, one can easily see the progression and growth of the order through the centuries. The community in Cleveland is the first permanently established monastery of Poor Clares in the United States of America. the rule written by St. Clare herself, its observances enriched and strengthened by St. Colette of Corby in 15th century France. vision for her sisters. Uh, she had a very definite idea of what she was to them. Uh, she was, she is, and she was uh, a mother, uh, and, but also a sister. So that the idea of being on a pilgrimage, even though we're in one spot all the time, even though we're in clothes, still we're on a pilgrimage. Spiritually significant in that she received the palm of martyrdom and already the token of victory in the olive branch. It's, that's a, a universal symbol. St. Clair counsels her daughters for all time to love God from the depth of your heart and Jesus, his son, who was crucified for us. Never let the thought of him leave your minds. And so today, the sisters ever strive to live lives worthy of this holy calling in prayer and humble penance, adoring the real presence of Jesus in his most holy sacrament 
and praying for all their brothers and sisters throughout the world. This is the essence of their vocation, hidden and sublime. The importance of our praying before the Blessed Sacrament is our Lord's presence there and His, His love that radiates from the Blessed Sacrament. And this is, uh, as we pray before the Blessed Sacrament in our chapel, it radiates throughout the whole world. It just isn't for this Cleveland area. It isn't just for the state of Ohio. It goes out to the, you know, uh, four enters, four corners of the world. <laughs> St. Clair writes in her rule of the grace of working. It is with this grace that each of the sisters carries out her assigned daily work within the monastery. Her prayer is enriched by her work and her work by her prayer. Graced as the whole of her life is by union with her beloved. When you're a young sister, you know, you're, you're doing other work, you know, more help around the house. And, and I had the garden when I was a younger sister and I helped in the infirmary. And later on, they had me for the sewing. And afterwards, they had me for the sewing the whole time. I've been at the sewing for about 30, 40 years, 30 or 40 years at the sewing. And helping with the dishes and getting up at night for the night office, keeping adoration during the, during the night or during the day. It was all work, work for God, work for souls. different tasks form the fabric of daily life in the monastery. While some sisters sew vestments and stoles to be worn by the clergy, others embroider altar linens or make the holy habit which the sisters wear. Secretaries answer the community mail with loving attention to all requests for the sisters' prayers, and sister artists share their talents by providing inspiring cards and pamphlets. A very special work and privilege is the baking of hosts for many of the parishes in Cleveland. Gardening and care of the landscape beautify God's house. And the sister cooks and bread bakers have the joy of nourishing their sisters and keeping them healthy. No matter what one does, if it is done for the Lord, it is holy. When the monastery bell calls each sister to the divine office, she hastens to take up her breviary to perform the greatest work of all, the opus dei, or work of God, and in union with the whole church, sings the praises of her Lord.
life of prayer, I found that model in the scriptures, and I just, it really drew me to this uh, form of life that was, uh, it was so great. And I have found it very fulfilling because our life is so scripturally oriented. And you can learn so much about the Lord and His way, and it makes you so much a better person. St. Clair and her nuns were totally enclosed in the first monastery in San Damiano, and it was her desire that this holy enclosure be preserved always. In her wisdom, she realized that a monastery must relate to the world around it, that world which has need of its prayers and example, that world which faithfully supports its women of prayer. And so, guided by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, she established a special kind of sister, having a vocation within a vocation. These were called extern sisters, and they were to be the face and helpful hands of each community in its relation to all around it. By their lives of unselfish service, the extern sisters enabled their cloistered sisters to continue without interruption their lives of prayer and penance. In the mind of St. Clair, the extern sisters would guard the enclosure by their very lives, radiating its life of prayer outward as well as its Franciscan joy. And, well, ever since I was um, in my early teens, my one desire was to be married and have a family. <laughs> and uh, all through um, growing up, that was my, my one desire. And my mom had encouraged me when I was younger to pray for a good husband. And I thought, oh, what a good idea. <laughs> and, but something was missing. And it was through the book, True Devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, uh, that really made me decide that I wanted to be a sister. And I was very taken by this community the simplicity of life and the, uh, our, our humble works, which, which lead us to uh, a deeper union with God. And thus does each poor Claire live, inspired by the words of her Holy Mother. I admonish and exhort all my sisters, both those present and those to come, to strive always to imitate the way of holy simplicity, humility and poverty and to preserve the integrity of our holy manner of life as we were taught by our blessed Father Francis.